as we come together, I put in the notes here, an acknowledgement that we need to be trained because as we saw just a few minutes ago, if we go out there half cocked, ready, fire, aim, and all we do is get busy, I would suggest to you that you don't have to look very far to see the carnage and the damage that that has done in our world. There are countless numbers of people who sit in churches today, countless numbers within the realm of our personal knowledge of people and relationships that feel like they're all set, feel like they know, but they don't know. We need to be trained because, again, building on where we started, if you don't know God and if you don't know him through his word and you don't hear him and know that you are acting in his will and his direction, you're doing damage. I mean, damage. It's, it's not like you're ineffective. You're doing damage. So I say to you here, we need to be trained. Why? First and foremost, because we live in a world that is biblically ignorant. And I don't say that in an offensive way. I say it literally using the word as it's meant. Ignorance is simply not knowing. We have a world that we live in, a community at large, and many who profess Christ who are biblically ignorant. What they profess is a caricature of Christianity, a caricature of Christ. Well, you know what I always heard? Well, when I was growing up, well, you know what the priest said? You know what my old Southern Baptist pastor said? But not God says. Not verified by the Bible, the Word of God. We need Our to... goal has to be to reproduce contagious Christians. To reproduce disciples who make disciples who make disciples. If you understand that and if you commit to it, then what I'm about to share with you and looking at this little diagram is going to be one of those pieces that I pray changes your life. Because until you get what we're about to look at, you're in a world of hurt. And you're going to be surrounded by people in a world of hurt. And it's only in the understanding of this that we're going to be able to be intentional and effective in getting to what Christ has given us as a mission. So look at this eternal circle. In the box, you see it surrounded by black. You see a white circle surrounded by black. What I want to show you is where and how and, and exactly uh, maybe the particulars of what it is to be a Christian. And our goal is to only do what Christ has called us to do, and that is to make disciples. In the black, you see it says laugh. There is a world around us, you and me, Christian, who is being laughing at all that we talk about. They say, this is all foolishness. This is crazy. They mock you and me, whether they're other worldviews, other religions, or people that just claim atheism or uh, agnostics who think that we're ridiculous. They literally, there's a world that's laughing at us. They obviously are not Christian. But come into the light. There are people that are looking at you and me, looking at Christ. And maybe they're doing things like checking out your walk, kind of peeking in behind your witness, listening to what you're saying. Maybe even kind of considering coming to a church service. Maybe they're checking out your life group. They're looking. They would not say to you, I'm a Christian. They would say, I'm looking. Now I want you to come into the next sphere. And if you look at the outer perimeter of those three larger circles, you see what appears to be almost like a rounded triangle. I want you to picture that total rounded triangle. That's the church, okay? But here's the distinction. That's the visible church. That's literally the church. That's people going to church, going to Christian church, okay? In there, you're going to have people that say, I'm, I'm willing to learn. I'm in the church. I want to learn. And in those three rounded circles, if you looked at the particulars in the top, we would say there is the content. This is where they are learning the truth, the gospel truth, where we look at the miracle, the Messiah, and the mission. In the lower left, we would call that the culture, where there is learning, living, and loving happening. And they're learning these things. And they're, yeah, I'm in the church. I'm learning. And in the lower right, that circle, that's where the conflict is. That's where the real world is saying, yeah, I'm fighting the world, the flesh, and the devil. Man, it's a battle. Spiritual warfare is happening. In that construct of those three circles, that's the church. And everybody in there is learning. And they would say, and here's the difference. I'm a Christian. I go to church. 
I, I'm learning the gospel. I'm, I'm, I'm being loving and I'm learning and I'm living it out. And in fact, I'm actually going through a lot of battles. That whole spiritual warfare, it's real. They're learning, but they're not yet loving. Now look a little closer. In that diagram, where you see the intersection of two of those larger circles, you'll see another subset. These are the folks that are liking what they're learning. They're getting even closer. Now they come to church regularly. They would profess Christ and they would say, hey, I've learned. I, I've learned about the gospel. I know the miracle, the Messiah, and the mission. And, and I understand the world, the flesh, and the devil. I'm fighting that spiritual warfare. And in fact, that culture, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I want to learn. I want to love. I want to live. But in each one of the subsets that you see that says like, you'll notice that they're only joined in two of the three. You see, where you join the truth of the gospel with the reality of warfare, in that little subset, what you would have is a Pharisee. Because to know the truth and to deal with the war, but not have the love of Christ, that's a Pharisee. You know the truth and you're willing to fight, but there's no love. Look across the bottom in that subset. If you have somebody that knows the reality of spiritual warfare and knows how to deal with it in a loving way, culturally loving way that subset is nothing more than a heresy for you see when you combine the reality of warfare and the approach of a lovingness but you don't have truth this is where false gospels reside that's a heresy look at the upper left where you combine the truth of the gospel and a loving nature but you've not yet been tested by the reality of the warfare there you have a seedling. And the parable of the soils will tell you that, yes, some of those are going to become true Christians. But just because they know the truth and they're acting loving, they've not yet been tested by the fires of life. They've not yet persevered. And so we can't say that therein is a Christian. We can say that some will be, but we know from the parable of the soil that many of those will not be. In that little construct, what I've shown you there is these are those that like it's only those that come from the laughing outside world. And I was one. If you're honest, so were you. We were God-haters. We were God-haters out there in the dark. We came in and we took a look around. We kicked the tires. We asked the questions. And then, praise God, by His grace, we were drawn in closer. We came in to learn. And maybe you're like me. Maybe you spent time in churches that taught me wrong, taught me bad. And I didn't do my part. I didn't go to the scriptures. I didn't check what I was hearing. I just took it and said, well, good enough for me. Hey, the guy's got the right uh, degree up on the wall and it feels good. So I was learning, but I was learning wrong. And then by the grace of God, he drew me closer. And I started to get some of this. And there was a time when I was negotiating. And yeah, I liked God. But I wasn't fully there. And it's only when the full truth of the gospel, the true love of Christ, tested and battle ready through the warfare, that you come to the center of that diagram where you'll see a little cross. I would say that's where you go from laughing to looking to learning to liking. This is loving and living in and for Christ. Now that's a long explanation of a small picture, but here's the thing. When we talk about personal evangelism, if you're not aiming for that sweet spot, stay home. Don't do it because so many people are being satisfied in the learning and in the liking circles. On Easter Sunday in our church, we talked about these are the people that are dying on the doorsteps of eternity. These are those that are in the front yard of heaven who feel good enough because they've learned some truth. They actually like what they're learning. But this idea of total surrender to the Lordship of Christ no, no, I'm not going that far. That's a little too much. Friends, you and I have to understand that if we bring people to that place and we drop them off, they're doomed. And you and I will be held accountable for sharing a false gospel that said to somebody that being in the church was the same as coming to Christ. It's not the same. 